All right, everyone, we're going to take an opening statement from head coach Gino Damari, and then we're going to go right into questions. Gino, go ahead. Well, just very pleased with how we've played here now the last few games, three, four games, um, just playing much better baseball, more complete baseball. Uh, I thought last Tuesday's game against FAU might have been our most complete game, and I think this one might even have topped that. Just, we just did everything. I mean, we hit some home runs. Um, we uh, stole base, I think. We, we read balls in the dirt really well, so base running was good. Uh, we had some two out, bunch of two out RBI hits, clutch hits, which is always huge. Played good D, and then of course it all starts in the mound, and we pitched very well. So, uh, just a very good, solid, complete game, and great way to start uh, the first game of the series. Awesome. All right, Gino, we're going to go to Christopher Stock of Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Gino, I imagine it's great to see Alex get going there, and not just with the home run, but just driving the ball to left field and just his overall night, your, your thoughts on how he did. And I assume it's got to be a, a relief for him to, to get one of these games in for him. Absolutely. I'm sure he's got to feel really good. And, of course, I feel really good, too, because, you know, he, he's a guy that's, you know, we, 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 need, we need his production. He's a power guy that hits the ball, can hit it out of the ballpark, can drive in runs in bunches because of his power and um and you're right it's really nice to see him stay on the ball he he, he just missed one i think his first at bat you know went deep to left field there and then he really as soon as he hit that one to left field out of the park i knew it was gone he just stuck it he let it get deep and just absolutely stuck it there to left center and and um and of course you know the other hit that he got um was opposite field the double i guess so you know it, Bottom line is he swing. He, I'm really, really happy with how he swung the bat, stayed on the ball, and hopefully he can build off this. And just to, uh, how has it been for him? Um, obviously, it's it's probably been frustrating. How, how has he been taking these 10 games here coming into this one? I'd say frustrating is a good word. Alex um, can be his own worst enemy at times. He, he gets down on himself, and he um, it, sometimes it, it um, doesn't help. Um, when he gets discouraged and uh, so you know um, but he also knows I mean him and I've had a few conversations he knows uh, that he has the ability to be very productive and he, you know I think he had told me it's just a matter of time but but he does he, he does have a tendency to get down on himself and uh, you know I th I think he's um, you know mentally I think he's in a good place coming into the game um, I know I felt good in talking with him, and I think he felt good too as well. We had a couple really good practices where Lopes had worked on some things with him, and I could see some improvements on what he was doing, and it just carried right over to the game. So let's just hope it continues. All right, Gino, we're going to go to Josh White of WVUM. Josh, go ahead. Congrats on the win, Gino. I know Anthony Villar got off to a slow start this season, and now he's really starting to heat up. What differences have you seen with him, if you've seen any differences over this last seven games or so with him? Remember now, slow start in terms of stats, not slow start in terms of how he hit the ball. He hit the ball and he drove. He, he hit the ball hard in Gainesville. He had some balls that were really hit well that just uh, end up right at him, you know, and so – um, no, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think he's had any struggles in terms of me as a coach watching him and his swing, maybe the adjustment I've seen of late, but, but just really in the last couple of games, is he staying on the ball better? Uh, I know he hit a ball to left field there. And of course the home run he hit, um, he was a little out in front. It was an off speed pitch, but he kept his hands back and really good job of, of doing that and being able to hit that ball out of the ballpark with the wind blowing in from right field. So, um, but all in all, Josh, I think he's been he's been swinging the back good. Other than the fact that I just like to see him stay on the ball a little more with his front side and not kind of leak and open up. And he's doing a better job of that. Every once in a while, he gets in trouble doing that. But for the most part, he's been much more consistent doing that. And then just with Alejandro tonight on the mound, giving you seven innings of of one hit ball, he seems like he you know it's only four career starts in. But but what did you see from him tonight? Well, you know, I saw that one inning there, and the guys, I'm sorry, I, I, I want to say it was the second inning, if I'm not mistaken, where he had some guys on base and he had to throw a lot more pitches, struggled, command wasn't there, and but he regrouped. He, I mean, he, it was just one inning where he was a little off. His command was a little off. The ball actually wasn't coming out of his hand quite as well, but then you look at him at the end of the, his uh, 
seventh inning and he's throwing 95, 96 miles an hour on the scoreboard. I don't know what it actually, but scoreboard said 95, 96. I'll have to look and see, but, but the ball was jumping out of his hand. I mean, and the command is great. The fastball command. Actually, I really liked how he threw his off speed for the first time. I thought his off speed was really, really effective change-ups, the breaking ball. Um, just to love his demeanor, love his demeanor on the mound. He's just such a tough kid and uh, gets after it. And, and um, so I'm very, very happy his first start on a Friday night for us. But, you know, you, you, you wouldn't notice anything different out of him. He's the same guy that he's been since he stepped on our campus. All right, Gina, we have time for a couple more. We're going to go back to Christopher Stock of Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, TV broadcast actually had 97 uh, for Rosario there yeah. in, in the seventh. Um, Jeez. You, you touched on his demeanor, and, and Villar just mentioned that he's a guy that feels like he can get better, he's going to work hard, and those kind of things. Can, can you speak on that, that uh, mentality uh, that you see from the young guy? From, from Alejandro? Yes. Rosario. Yeah, he's been like that, Chris, since he got here. I mean, he's – you just, you know, you, you try to you know, get to know these guys when you're recruiting them and everything, but you, know, you really don't get to know them fully uh, until they get here and then you're around them every day and you see them on the field and how they interact and just how they are. How they are. And um, man, he's great. He's, he's, I just hope he never changes. That's all I can tell you. I hope he never changes because he's a fun guy to coach. He's always a yes, sir, no, sir. He's always, which doesn't, by the way, not a big deal to me, but he's that respectful and he, he He's just very, very coachable. He kind of, he's interesting because he's always around. Uh, if practice is over for the pitchers and the hitters are doing something on the field, he's sitting there watching all the hitters. Um, it, it, it's amazing how he's always around, um, you know, the, the field and, and paying attention and watching. He's a sponge with JD, an absolute sponge. And um, oof, the sky's the limit with this guy. If he keeps that mentality, I, I don't see any reason why he would change. Um, you're talking about something really, really, I mean, he is already special, but my goodness, imagine in a couple of years, just working with JD and, and improving and developing and uh, just so excited, but a fun, fun guy to coach because he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. And, and just one, one last thing um, on the broadcast. They also mentioned that CJ Kafis maybe uh, got a late scratch, wasn't feeling well. Uh, can you comment on that? How's he doing? And then also, I haven't had a chance to ask you, but Chad Bourne um, getting yeah. hurt, what's kind of the severity with him? Well, obviously, with the game the way it was, uh, there was no reason to put the guys in. They're a little nicked up. Uh, Kafe is just a freak thing. He, he came in this morning. He slept bad, um, got a kink in his neck. And we tried everything to kind of uh, get it out of there. But it's one of those deals where if anybody's ever slept bad and you can't turn your head, that's what CJ has. So kind of a freak thing, but that was the deal. So there was no reason to put him in. And, and be honest with you, we weren't, even if it was a close game, because he, you can't turn your head. You, you know, you got to, my goodness, you can't do anything. You can't play baseball, certainly. I mean, I don't know how you can do anything, really. So uh, Chad's been nursing it, just a tweak in his hamstring. And um, so we're just trying to be very cautious because hamstrings can linger. And so, um, you know, I think Chad could Chad could have played tonight, but he wasn't scratched. But just there's no reason to put him in that situation. But um, that's it. Yeah, just a, a tweak in a hamstring. All right, Gino, our last question for you comes from Wyatt Kopelman of UMTV. Wyatt, go ahead. Coach Tamari, congratulations on the win. Alex McFarlane came in for two innings to replace Rosario late in the game, held Wake Forest scoreless. Just really, what, what did you see out of him, and what do you expect from him for the rest of the series and in future series from now? Alex McFarland. Well, we have high hopes for Alex McFarland. I mean, we think the world of him. He's such a talented kid um, and hasn't caught on yet. Um, I think it was good for him to get out there uh, in that situation. Not a lot of pressure. He can just focus on pitching. And um, of course, you can see when he gets the, the ball explodes out of his hand as well. And of course, he's got good breaking stuff, too. He has a tendency to get a little uh, aggressive with his front side and uh, kind of like a hitter and he flies open. And then the ball doesn't catch the hand, the arm doesn't catch up. And that's where you get where the ball, you know, and again, I'm hitting somebody today and you get a little wild on his arm side there because he's just a little too aggressive with the front side. Having said that, I did like his demeanor on the mound. That's something we've talked about. I thought he was very aggressive in terms of his mentality, his body language, and trying to go after hitters. Just got to clean up the mechanic side of it a little bit because you don't want to be too um, aggressive flying open. But yeah, very happy with it. Hopefully this is an outing. 
that albeit, you know, the score was 10 to nothing, he can really build off of get confidence because he's got so much ability. Um, and he is a guy that we would like to put in, obviously, in situations in the game where they're much more crucial. So this was kind of a stepping stone to get him going for that. Awesome. Gino, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. And congrats okay. on the victory. All right. Thank you, guys.